Today we're going to be going over the Z-Pax Zero Backpack. I want to talk a little bit about why I got this backpack and how I use it. The Zero is a highly customizable backpack. Z-Pax lets you add all kind of features to kind of tailor it to how you backpack. So I wanted to talk a little bit, bit about what I added on what I opted to leave off and how I feel about them after using the backpack now. Zero is. Essentially, the Z-Pack Zero is a frameless backpack where you get your choice of materials, uh, features, designs. You get to pick a lot of this. Essentially, though, a Zero is just this. A main pack body, two shoulder straps. The rest of this I have chosen to add on. And that'll be your choice when adding or when ordering whether or not you want some of these things whether you would use some of these features or if they are silly and you would never use them obviously all of that is going to be decided by you depending on how you pack backpack what you bring with you where you backpack backpack will obviously influence that so let's just start with a couple of main choices that i made and designed on mine the first thing I want to talk about is the main body. So the main body is this white, very clear Cuban fiber that you can see. It's see-through, it's very light, and reasonably durable. I've had this pack for a year. I don't have any issues with it so far. Um, I use it for light summer backpacking, and I've also found I'm using it more and more for day hikes because of the size. I ordered the size small, so I think that's about 27 liters, um, but I also have this huge rear pocket that I've added on that I'll get into in a sec. So this white part that you see is 1.43 um, weight Cuban fiber. So it's the lighter option, and the reason I chose the white is if you can see this, you can pretty much see through it. You can see my hand there. So what that means for me and the reason I decided on it is I can see almost all of the contents inside this main pack body from the outside. If it's pushing up against the outside, it also lets a lot of light in, so it helps me see that. Then what I've decided to do is add a back pocket. Now, Z-Packs offers a mesh back pocket that you can see here, but I saw on some blogs that some people had asked to have it customized into their hybrid and this is 2.9 2.9 something like that um cuban fiber with a 50 denier uh, polyester so it's a, it's a lot more durable you can definitely feel it it's thicker when you feel it and the reason i did that is a couple things one i hate mesh i feel like i put stuff in mesh and i go to pull it out too quickly and i tear a hole in it it's the first thing to go for me and I wanted a pack that is going to last a couple years. Um, so I went with that. The other thing is with this being such a such a light material, what I wanted is some durability here so that when I go and put my pack down like that, it's sitting on this part which is at least a little bit more durable than here. So when it's sitting on the ground, that's fine. This can take some abuse, but a lot of the times I just lay it down on the back on this thicker back pocket. So let's talk a little bit more about the back pocket and then we'll get into each individual feature I added and yes or no, would I add them again? So the first thing is you can see here is the shock cord I added on the back. That was an option as well. This, this pack does not come with that. You can add the shock cord without having this back pocket and have it against the main pack body. You can have it over the pack or over the this extra back pocket I've added. Um, a couple things 
that I like and dislike. One, I'm very happy with my choice of the thicker uh, fabric here. Um, I like the durability. I'm not a true ultra lighter. I do not go ultra light on every trip. I am prone to wrecking some things. I like that I went with a little bit fat, diff, um, stronger fabric here. The only thing I can compare it to for some people that have never held Cuban fiber or seen it is this almost feels like um, those plastic reusable shopping bags. This feels like the plastic ones you get at the store that you just throw out or use as your garbage bags. This feels more like the reusable one, just to give you a, a comparison at least. So then, let me put the camera down here. Let's get into something else I've chosen. In this pocket, because I've chosen the fully enclosed, non-breathable Cuban fiber, I asked to have a drain hole added. And I think I can get it in there. It's right there. Okay. I asked for a drain hole because if I put anything wet in here, a tarp or anything, or uh, my water crossing shoes or anything like that, I wanted the water to be able to drain. That's the great thing about the mesh pocket, I guess, is all that water would drain out. With this, um, not as well. I was hoping this would be a little bit bigger. Let me put my finger in there so you can see. Where is it? There it is. Yeah, that's the drain pocket. I was expecting that to be a little bit bigger. That does not drain very well. So I was kind of hoping for a, a bigger drain grommet when I asked for one. Um, the other thing that I like is there is a two-way zipper on here that they've added. So you see you can go that way and go that way. It's a little thing but they run smooth it's a good quality zipper a little extra expensive for them to put on but i like that they did um and the last thing there's a little tab in here should you want to hang whatever you need to hang sometimes i put a clothespin through there and just hang my socks out there you can put your water bladder keys whatever you need um, i like having that there would I order this again? Yes, I would. I would 100% order the extra pocket and I would order it in this uh, more durable, heavier um, Cuban fiber. Would I add these again? I think I would. As I said, I'm not a true ultra lighter. Every ounce doesn't matter to me. I like having some compression to be able to yank up on this and it pulls everything down in towards my back. I like being able to put my tripod in here. I like being able to stick a wet jacket up there for a couple extra bucks and don't quote me on any of these prices, but I think it was five or 10 extra bucks to have that laced up. I would keep both of these, do them again. All right, let's talk about the opening now. So there's two options. This is the standard option that I got that comes with all the packs. I didn't pay any extra about this. But what you can get is a roll top closure. So obviously this is not a roll top closure, but it would roll down like that. And then you would buckle it down like that. Um, I'm not a huge fan of roll top closure, so I didn't get it. I'm still torn on what's the right answer because I don't love this system. I don't hate it, but I don't love it. Um, basically it's just a big opening with a drawstring. So you can cinch it up tight and I mean even at its tightest it does not seal completely there's still a hole there um, this is easy to get in and out of I love that it's so easy to get in and out of this pack to grab stuff but the weather protection um, it doesn't keep the elements out I mean, there's a giant hole in the top of your bag. Cuban fiber is waterproof, essentially, once you add in another feature that I'll go into after. Um, but that's all for naught when you have a giant hole in the top of your pack. 
So as I said, I don't love roll top closures. I find they take too long to unbuckle, roll up, roll down. That's why I didn't order it, but I'm not convinced that I ordered the right thing. Would I do this again? Maybe again on that one. Next thing I added was the webbing belt. I didn't go with the heavy padded belt because 27 liters is not a lot of space. There's no way you can get the weight up and up to need a padded belt. So I went with the webbing belt and I went for the, with this. I decided on this for a couple reasons. One, it's removable. So if I don't need it, it comes off, throw it in the bag, throw it at home, whatever. Two, um, I don't like bags that bounce around a lot when they're on and wobble all over the place. That said, I've never once used this. This has never come to unclip like this. I've never taken it off and left it at home because it weighs almost nothing, but I've also never put it on. So, webbing belt, I would probably do it again. I'm not sure. I would recommend it for everyone though. If you're looking to save money, I think that would be one of the first things that I would cut out. Next thing I added was called the key pocket. Um, and this is one of my favorite things I added and one of the best decisions. I went back and forth on this and I'm so happy I ended up doing it. Um, it's nothing more than a little pocket that sits near the top of the back. It sits right here. Um, and it's not much bigger than a cell phone and a keys and wallet kind of thing or a bar or GPS or something small. But my favorite part about this is that it is detachable. So it just has these webbing loops here. It just pops on and off. Let's see if I'm able to actually do it under the pressure of the camera. Of course not. Like that, you get the idea. Um, and it, it can come out it's you can just have the empty bag or you can take this out this key pocket out and i've found i take this out all the time i take it out and use it in another back pad i take it out and take it to work this always gets used it's just hung on by little uh cord locks that go through these little webbing loops so you just feed them through So easy. Like that. There we go. And it just hangs there. Um, so again, easy out, easy not. And it goes into every other backpack I have too if I'm using a different backpack. I would do that again 10 times out of 10. Again, looking in the bag, we're going to go over two things quickly here. One, hydration sleeve. Um, just a little elasticized pocket in here. I'm blocking all your view with my hand. Um, for you to slip your hydration bladder in. Um, I'm torn on that because another feature is side pockets for water bottles. So if you're a water bottle carrier uh, and want those, you can get water bottle pockets here. I opted not to get those because I wanted a cleaner outside of the pack. Um, and again, I'm torn on that, whether or not I should have gotten that or should have gotten the hydration thing. I rarely use the hydration um, sleeve, to be honest. It either goes in here and it's easier to get in and out when the pack is full, or I clip water bottles onto shoulder straps so again i would say hydration bladder would be no i would not get that again now time for the new, an embarrassing confession i opted to tape the seams of this backpack you can see that's that's extra money okay they don't come taped and i came i got them taped thinking obviously it would add to the waterproof why have a waterproof fabric and then not tape the seams. It also adds to the durability and the strength of the seams, so I do like that. But if you remember earlier, I uh, 
have a giant pack in the top of my hole, or a hole in the top of my pack, not a pack in the top of my hole. So I don't think it matters much that the seams are taped when there's a giant hole here. Yeah, so maybe if you get the dry, or the roll top closure to keep the inside dry, get your seams taped. If you have this same opening that I do, that has a giant hole, don't waste your money. I have saved my favorite, absolute favorite feature for last, and that is the lashing for a sleeping pad on the back. This is the smartest way to carry a foam pad that I've ever seen. A lot of them have them inside and they're zippered in and you have to get all your stuff out and then it's hard to get them back in. This is so well designed. All it is is two triangles of shock cord and all you have to do is take your sleeping pad and you're done. goes in that quick, it comes out that quick. You stop and take a break, you throw that in, or you take that out and sit on it, you get back on hiking. It takes under 10 seconds to put it back in place. So well designed. I've even started doing this on some of my other packs that don't have this. It's not hard to do, it's just a webbing tab here. You can even Get some double-sided tape and tape them on your other backpacks. This is the smartest. I don't know why no one's thought of it before. Do this again. Now, with this, it adds some rigidity. If you have a, a foam pad like this, just a blue foam pad, a single sheet one, and gives some frame to the pack. It makes the carrying comfort a lot better. It makes the weight carrying distribution a lot easier but you need to get the right foam pad. See how this is one piece? This one works perfectly. This is just a blue foam pad from Mech. It was cheap. It was probably $12, $14, something like that. Mech is the Canadian REI for anyone that doesn't know. But something like this, which is just the Z-Pack, or the, the Z-Pack, excuse me, the Thermarest um, Z-Seat, I think it's called, doesn't work nearly as well. It's too wide. It's not rigid enough, it folds up, and it doesn't fit properly. So you need to make sure you get the right uh, dimensions on this. If you saw the blue one fits perfectly, you could just get one of the blue foam pads and cut it to size. I actually just got lucky and this foam pad fits absolutely perfect like it was made for it. Um, but you can get your own and cut it, or I think uh, Gossamer Gear sells them too, maybe. But I love that. This is my favorite feature of this pack that I added. Definite thumbs up. All right, so last thing I want to do is I'm actually on z -Pax's website, and I want to go over some of the other features that are available that I did not add or forgot to talk about quickly. Uh, side pockets, I didn't add, went over that. Mesh center pocket, I went over my dislike for mesh. Padded uh, hip belt, I talked about. I don't think it's needed on the pack this small or designed for loads this light. Um, hydration port, um, obviously I have a big opening in mind, so I did not need the hydration port added. That would obviously be if you got the roll top closure and, and as well as the internal sleeve, you would want to use that. Um, top strap, the base straps, um, base straps down here are an option for carrying your sleeping pad. Um, I like the top strap, I would not get those again. Oh god, I forgot about this, this is the bane of my existence. Besides the tape seams, this is one of the stupider mistakes I made. I don't have a haul loop on mine. There's nothing there to carry it. There's nothing there to pick it up. This is the base, this is the top strap you can see hanging there. I don't know why I didn't get it. I don't know if I just missed it and forgot. I don't know. I think I thought I was just going to pick it up by the shoulder straps because it would be lying down. 
anyway, that was the stupidest mistake I made. Get a haul loop. You don't know how many times you go to grab your backpack right there and there's nothing there. Um, ice axe loops, I did not get. I don't think I missed them. The only thing is sometimes uh, putting a trekking poles on can be tricky. Oh, there's trekking pole holders is separate. Maybe that. I definitely don't need an ice axe. This is too light and I don't, I wouldn't use this in that scenario. Um, load lifter straps I also don't use. Um, I think the top strap pulls it in close enough to my shoulders and I think the loads are light enough in this. And the last thing, and it was actually more pricey, so it was one of the things I didn't get, was the backpack lid, multi-pack. I may look at ordering that just out of interest. There's a lid that goes over the top of this um, and you can wear it if you're day hiking or whatever if you're hiking in with this. So that's it. There's all the features. So last couple of things I wanted to talk about. Um, I realized I didn't go over in the video. Um, one is the sternum strap, which you can obviously see there. It's really comfortable. It's really thin, but I quite like it. Two is the shoulder straps, which are again quite thin but wide, which is my favorite. I don't like when shoulder straps are overly padded and thick. They're, these are about two and a half inches wide, so they're quite wide. They distribute the load a lot over the shoulders, so there's no real hot spots or pressure points. Um, and there's daisy chains all down them, so obviously you can move the sternum strap up or down in uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different spots or if you uh, like to clip your water bottles on. You can clip your water bottles on the front. The uh, one thing you will notice though is that Cuban fiber does not breathe. It is very hot out today. It's about 33 degrees Celsius. It's hot for me. I'm Canadian, I don't like heat. Um, and Cuban fiber does not breathe. So I don't know if I'm getting there yet. Yeah, I am there will be sweat stains in the form of an S around your shoulder straps and your back, which is I think why I like the um, foam against my back too, because while the foam doesn't breathe, it at least absorbs some of that water, gets it off your back. So I hope that helps guys. If you're uh, looking at buying a Zero or just interested in seeing the different features, I hope that'll help you make a decision on yours. All right. See you out there, guys. Happy hiking.